welcome back to Beauty Bee. In today's video, I'm going to be looking at my best and my worst purchases of 2020. Now, these are not the best products I bought in 2020. These are the best and worst, unfortunately, ways I approached buying cosmetics in 2020. We are going to be looking at particular items, my reasoning behind buying them, and what I think I can learn from that going forward, either in a let's do more of this, that was a great approach, or in a less positive light, let's not do that again. So I think so that we can end on a high note, we'll start with the bad and work towards the good. But let's start with some e.l.f. products, because I just did not approach e.l.f. in a good way this year. First, what is this e.l.f. lip lacquer in the shade T Rose? Now, I bought this on e.l.f.com for like 60 cents during a Labor Day sale, I think it was. And I don't dislike it. However, it was one of those items that you pick up solely to get to free shipping. And um, I didn't read a single review for this. I had no idea what I was getting. I mean, I assumed it was something shiny, but I should have read the reviews and realized that this was going to be more of a liquefied lipstick, and I should have looked up swatches. I thought that this was going to be much more pink than it ended up being. It is lavender with quite a bit of gray to it, and while I do like it, while I have worn it in ways that I really enjoy, um, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And this very easily could have been a huge miss. In that same e.l.f. order, I bought another item, 95% because it was cheap. This is the e.l.f. Foundation Serum. And I did read the reviews on this, and I saw that it had almost no coverage, which wasn't what I was looking for particularly. I didn't want a super high coverage, but I was aiming more for light to medium coverage. This is, uh, light to no coverage. I also should have taken it as a sign that it was going to be almost no coverage, that it came in I think four shades, maybe five shades. Now, to Elf's credit, these do run a good spectrum. This fair to light, yes, shade works quite well for me. There it is rubbed in, in my on my hand. Uh, I mean, it does pull a little bit dark and a little bit almost orange, but that's fine. I can very much make this work and it doesn't look bad on me at all. But I should have known that it wasn't going to give the effect that I was looking for. And while this was only $1.60, so it wasn't a huge waste of money, I mean, it was $1.60 that I didn't need to spend, first of all, and could have put towards something that I think I would have liked a lot more than this, which I pretty much just tolerate. I promise that this entire bad purchase category is not just everything I bought from e.l.f. this year. But here's the third and final e.l.f. product. This is the Blemish Control Face Primer, or as I thought I was getting when I purchased this at Target, the uh, Color Correcting Green Primer. Right, I didn't even read this. I just saw that it was the green e.l.f primer bottle and I bought it. I think that one of the reasons that so many of these bad purchase decisions are e.l.f. is because it feels low risk. You know, if I was going to purchase something from Sephora, I would really think about it and know that if I buy it and it doesn't work for me, I could theoretically return it, but I'm probably not going to, so that's just money down the drain. These are money down the drain too if I don't use them. They're just a little less money down the drain. But, you know, add it up. I've got three items from e.l.f. here that I probably should have known were not going to be favorites when I bought them, but I purchased them anyway. So, uh, this is sad, but I guess my lesson learned from this is to read use my literacy. 
goodness. The fourth product is another one that if I just read the label, I probably would have realized this was not going to be a favorite product for me, but I didn't. And just like the last purchase, I bought this on a whim in store at Target. And I did want a brighter colored nail polish. So this looked fine. I picked it up, I brought it home. And then I realized that this has this big sticker that says sneaker-like texture. And as weird as it sounds, yeah, that's that's a reasonable uh, that's a reasonable description of this texture. It is sort of mottled and it looks like that um, faux leather plastic substance that really inexpensive um, tennis shoes are made of. And at first I thought, okay, so this is weird, but I can make it work. You know, I can add some dark glossy top coats. No, that doesn't help. It then looks like a glossy, inexpensive tennis shoe. It's, it's just gross. I don't like this at all. And I would have known that I w would not like this if I just read the sticker. This is not exactly a small, insignificant detail. This is not the fine print. This is the bold print. Now the fifth item is actually one that I really like. This is the NYX Ultimate Edit in Ash. And I really do like this palette overall. I mean, I could do without these two shades, admittedly, but the remaining four make a very pretty quad that I use quite a bit and really enjoy. Now, the thing is, this wasn't what I wanted. And what I wish that I had done instead is bought the slightly more expensive version that I really wanted, which was their 16 pan palette. I'll put a picture up here. Now, I can't justify buying that 16 pan palette now that I have this six pan. I mean, the shade that I would use most often in that 16 pan is in here, as is this, which is probably the shade I would use second most often in that big 16 pan palette. But there are colors in that 16 pan that I would like to have, would have appreciated, and I know that I tend to prefer smaller pans of eyeshadow. I mean, I do not need this giant pan of a matte blue shadow. I'm never going to use that up. When I think of how long I'm likely to have this and how much I'm likely to use it, I think that it would have made more sense for me to just shell out that extra, I think, $6, $7 for the 16 pan one that I really wanted instead of trying to save a few bucks and getting the six pan one that doesn't really fit my needs quite as well. So now let's change course and talk about some really smart purchases that I made this year. Some really good approaches to shopping that I took and hopefully will emulate more in the future. And let's actually start with the other NYX palette that I bought, which is this NYX Ultimate Utopia. Now it's very pretty and you can see that in this case I did spring for the 16 pan palette and before I bought this I sat down and compared the smallest version, the medium sized version which is this, and the very large size which I didn't seriously consider and I looked at each individual shade and decided if I had something similar already and if it was something that I would actually use. And what I came up with with this particular palette is I believe that it was four, 13 or 14 shades. I don't think I had anything particularly similar to in my collection and I thought I would use. So I decided it was a good buy. It really did, you know, add value, add something new to my stash, and 
I knew deep down going in that I was going to get a lot of use out of this palette, and I have. So I think that was a great approach to buying a palette, and I'm really happy not just with the item that I bought, but also how I approached buying this palette. Item number two is another nail polish. This is the Sally Hansen Insta Dry in the shade Time is Money. Now I bought this during the summer when I was at my parents' house with a very limited selection of makeup. And at the point that I bought this, I had used up the two nail polishes that I had packed and brought with me. Now I really like painting my nails, and while my mom does have nail polish that she was happy to share with me, my mom only wears pink nails and I prefer a little bit more variety, a little bit more color. So I decided to pick up this, which is a shade that I'd actually been considering buying for quite a while. I'd had my eye on this for probably about a year or two, and I decided to just go for it this summer. It's in a formula that I know I like from a lot of past experience, so I was pretty sure it was going to work for me. And I am glad that I went with this because I could be almost certain that it was going to work out really well. I think this was a smart and informed purchase that really did add value to my collection, not only over the summer when I had no other nail polish, but also when I came back, this is not an overlapping shade with what I already had. Now another thing I bought this summer to add some variety to my, the very small portion of my stash that I had available were these Sephora Cream Lip Stains. Now I had heard good things about these for years on YouTube, but I'd never bought one before, and I decided to pick up a mini set. Now. Generally, I have mixed feelings about mini sets, but I think this one was pretty perfect. I did want to have something a little bit darker, and at some points during the summer I thought that I may be not stuck because I love being with my parents, they're lovely people, but um, stuck with them for the entire fall and maybe into the winter, and I thought this would be a great addition. There was a bright red, which I also did not have, and these this matte kind of formula is what I prefer to wear these bolder colors in. I like a relatively mess-free uh, approach to these really bold colors. And there was also a mauvey nude, and I didn't have a really good nude color with me. Additionally, I kind of suspected that this would work out okay. Uh, mauves tend to look good on me. And as far as the fact that they're minis goes, I mean, I have used this one at least 12 or 15 times, I would say. Likely more than that, and I still have plenty of product left. I'm in no, I'm at no risk of running out of these anytime soon. Another good approach to shopping came with this NYX Glitter Glue, or the NYX Glitter Primer. I always want to call it a glitter glue, but it's not. I got this also on a whim at Target, again. However, I really did think about this one. I, I knew that I had some glittery shades in the Utopia palette, as well as um, a glitter from ColourPop that I was not getting a ton of use out of. And I knew that I'd heard good reviews on this going back a few years on YouTube. So when I saw it and I saw that it was, I believe, on sale or I had a coupon or Target Circle offer, something along those lines, I decided that it was would be a good utilitarian product for me and that I should pick it up. And I've gotten a ton of use out of it. I really like it. This was a very good now I've got three minutes left on my now I've got three minutes of memory left so let's see if we can't speed through this 
The last really good purchase I made this year was actually another win purchase. These are the Hummingbird blushes from Wet n Wild. These came out, I believe, spring 2018, maybe even 2017. And I really wanted them at the time, but I wanted to see them. Oh no, I just gouged one in person before I bought. And I don't think they ever came to the stores near me, at least not that I ever saw in person. So they kind of got away from me. They were sold out on the retailers that I usually shop at, but I was looking at Wet n Wild online and I saw that they were in and I didn't buy them, you know, snap decision. I did go and look back at um, Lacey, Spooky Lips and Fat Hips. She had a video that I recalled where she had talked about these and I saw and I heard that she really adored them, that she thought they were really pretty glowy blushes. And I agree, I really enjoyed them. I wanted this mostly for the hummingbird embossing, I'll be honest about that. But I'm glad that I looked it up and saw that it was a product that I was very likely to enjoy as well before I actually made the purchase. So I hope that going into 2021, I can continue to make these wise purchases and hopefully cut down on the number of regretful purchases I have to talk about next year. Let me know what uh, wise or less than wise decisions you've made this year regarding purchasing makeup. And I hope you'll consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed. I've got 15 seconds left. I'm winning. See ya.